morning, everyone, and welcome to UK Valorant. I am your host, Yingsu Collins, and this is the UK University Championship presented in partnership with The Newell. So it's week three of the second University Valorant series, and we have two very, very exciting matches coming up. Uh, so the first game will be Coventry Phoenix against Royal Bears. Um, we're currently still in the Swiss stages of the tournament. Uh, which consists of a best of ones at the to at the moment. Um, we are here every Thursday evening, so make sure to come back and check us out next Thursday, which will be the last week of the Swiss tournament format. And from there on, we're going to move into group stages and then playoffs. And alternatively, if you want another competition to quench your UK University Valorant thirst, you can tune in to the Newell's stream every Monday evening, uh, but otherwise come back here and join us every Thursday. Uh, first, I am joined by two very, very talented casters, casters, Elixir and Grace on the desk today. Although you can't actually see Grace, she is here. Um, she's having some uh, webcam issues, but we will be hearing her beautiful voice. Uh, Grace, are you there? I'm there, yeah, hello. <laughs> nice. Uh, how are you? I'm good, yeah, how are you? Not too bad. Uh, what about you, Elixir? I know his name is spelled with an A, but I just want to uh, preface <laughs> that it's pronounced Elixir, like the potion. Yeah, you know, mistakes were made. Yeah, it's a long story, but if you guys really want to know uh, the, the tales behind Elixir's name, we can get into that in the break if there's enough demand for it in chat. Um, it's super interesting and I will let him tell you that story himself. Uh, but before we get into that, um, we actually have a brand new Twitch poll this week. We're very proud of it. Uh, basically, you can vote in the chat who you think is going to win each of the matches. So as I said before, uh, first up, we have Coventry against Royal Bears. Um, so just type in chat. I think that's how it works. Who you think is going to win the first match and let us know. But we here have done our own predictions um, and I believe that both Elixir and Grace have their prediction who they think is going to win the first game. So I will go to Elixir first. So tell us who you think is going to come out on top in this first game. Well, uh, I went with Coventry um, purely because they are currently winning the poll, and uh, that just means you've got to pander to the crowd. No, and don't the give him pressure. Overwhelming majority of the crowd has gone with one, so I too will go with one. Let's go, Coventry. Okay. Well, I feel like uh, Grace is going to uh, give us a little bit, of, a little bit more um, ana analysis, analysis uh, into why <laughs> she's going to pick. I'm sure Coventry as well. Well, you know, I on paper, Coventry do look the best. They have an OMWP, which stands for Opponent Match Win Percentage, of 53.4%. So this means that Coventry have actually played harder teams uh, than Royal Bears so far. Royal Bears have a OMWP of 15.7%. So, you know, yeah, you can argue on paper Coventry should win this and they will win this, but Seeing as, uh, you know, Elixir over here has said that he thinks Coventry will win and I love a good underdog, I'm going to I'm gonna back Royal Bears for this. I like that. Well, uh, you guys know that I went to Warwick Uni. So those of you in chat who don't know, I went to Warwick Uni. So I can't in my sort of good conscience pick Coventry. So I absolutely have to go with <laughs> Royal Bears based off of just bias. Um, but I, but again, like I like to go against the grain, so I feel like Elixir is going to win sort of the hearts of the crowds. But Grace and I might, might, might look a bit better if, if Coventry do lose this game. Um, I guess before I hand it over to you, you two, um, what, what can we expect uh, today? I guess we haven't had like a huge patch from the game itself as we did uh, last week, before last week when the Viper changes came in. Um, so I guess I want to get a bit of an opinion from the two of you. What do you think we should be expecting in terms of actual gameplay today and, and what, what you'd like to see today? So ideally from a kind of uh, map pick perspective, the first map, well, the only map actually is a best of one. Uh, it is going to be bind, which in terms of like whether or not it's going to be attack or defender sided, it's a very, very equal map. And I think this is a very, very safe play here uh, by the teams. And I think also it is important to know that uh, Royal Bears would have picked the side for this and they have chosen to start an attack. So I would expect them to bring a lot of Intel utility to the table. I will expect them to bring, you know, a Sova, um, maybe, you know, a Sage as well. Well, 
obviously probably a sage i think a lot of people tend to have sage in the lineup as she is arguably one of the if only healers at the moment uh so you know Silver, Sage, maybe a Cypher. And then ideally, I'd like to see, you know, there have been changes to Viper, but maybe people will bring that. Maybe they'll bring a Reyna. Uh, I don't really see anyone bringing a Raze. I've noticed a lot of people don't really tend to bring Raze. So uh, how about you, Alexa? Alexa, are you with us? Okay, well... Oh, that's okay. We've been told that Elixir is currently having some technical difficulties. Um, so in his place, I will also uh, just mention that I completely agree with you. I think Sage is super important right now. But Absolutely. what's really interesting is that we are seeing other top level European competitive teams um, mm. that aren't using Sage at the moment. I've seen, I, I've been kind mm. of eagle eyed in their pracs as well. I've been sort of... Um, buying on their scrims um, and like, at, the, at the moment like cypher is on every single map everyone has a cypher and if you look for if you look at some of the um free agent calls um valorando for example they're i think specifically looking for a cypher player right now mm, um, for sure. yeah and i and i've seen that to be sort of the one everyone's going for and I mean, like, like i said it's kind of interesting that some teams are choosing not to not to pick the sage I guess it's that kind of idea of almost, you know, not playing as passively then by not having the healer. You want to get Cypher on the board and have that extra intel. The ability to reveal your opponent's locations is, you know, it's game changing at times, especially in a competitive environment. So again, like you say, if you're seeing this at top level, top level players tend to be more fun and gun, if that makes sense. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, they want to get stuck in, they want to get those frags in, they want to get that economy, essentially, by getting mm. as many kills as they possibly can. And a big way of doing that, I don't really care, think they care too much about uh, having the Sage, because if someone's dead, it's already technically lost money to them when the games mm. are typically that close. Um, I f Again, with this kind of matchup with Coventry and Royal Bears, I will. it would be interesting to see if they follow the Pro League style of play right now. Mm -hmm. uh, the pro level style of play rather um, but I do expect them to bring bringing a sage again mm -hmm. as I say having intel utility is very very useful if you are attacking a map that is relatively you know equal because um, you can just instantly know where people are going to be you can prepare for that as you make the approach to the sites and just go in and win hopefully mm -hmm. <laughs> Obviously, these two teams are kind of similarly matched at the moment. It'd be really interesting to see like a really, really top seeded team uh, maybe take a risk if they're playing a lower seeded team and just mm -hmm. go, do you know what? We're going to create our own meta. We're not going to pick the Sage. We're going to come in with something kind of wacky. Uh, maybe sure. really, really learn to utilize the Viper more because I feel like she's so underrated. Um, Definitely. Uh, given what she can do. So that could be quite interesting. We might not see that today, but um, hopefully as the weeks go on and, and as the meta starts to sort of shape up a bit more, we'll we'll see that. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, so hopefully, like I said, we can see that. But because we are having a little bit of technical difficulty, you guys are going to have to put up with um, me and Grace's general chatter. Um, <laughs> uh, and... I didn't actually get to uh, sort of ask you this, Grace, beforehand when we were prepping, but um, I understand you're obviously playing Valorant, right? At the moment, you're you're sort of grinding. Badly, but... <laughs> what rank are you? Do you mind me asking? I, I feel like now... I haven't, like actually, I haven't actually ranked up in it yet. Uh, my main focus, unfortunately, is Siege. Uh, mm -hmm. So I still do have a lot of work to do with Valorant. Um, yeah, so... so I will, I will, uh, I think maybe in the weeks to come, uh, if enough pressure from yourself and the audience here sat at home, if there is enough pressure for me to start doing Ranked for Valorant, then I will. Yeah, I honestly <laughs> think we should do some kind of show match, um, which I think oh is not going to be <laughs> as good quality uh, as what we're about to see now. So I am going to throw this to you, Grace, and hopefully Elixir is back with us uh, as we go into game one. I have returned from the dead, supposedly. <laughs> we love to see it. <laughs> yeah, you, you love the biggest glow for 2020, Mike actually working. But uh, it seems like we're actually finally getting into it, going to bind as promised. And mm -hmm. uh, now it's, 
we finally get to get to the good stuff, the the best stuff, the thing, the reason we're all here at the end of the day. <laughs> see, this is the thing that I'm very, very curious to see now is just the lineups that both teams are going to bring to the table. Um, as I've said previously, Royal Bears have essentially picked the starting side for themselves for this map. They are choosing to start on attack. I don't know how this is going to go yet, but curious to see indeed. Yeah, well, with both teams being 2-2, two -two, they we're really just going to see how that difference in uh, their opponent win percentage uh, really comes into play, and if one team is going to get like a massive snowball. Because that's a lot of things that sometimes we see when there is a mismatch, even if you do, you are in the same round. Mm. Uh, you can sometimes just see that a weaker team with a similar record can very much distance themselves from a uh, team that, you know, maybe took a, a pretty rough loss uh, against a team that maybe they shouldn't have been playing so early in Swiss. For sure. And again, it's it, like you say, it's because it is early days. It could just be that, you know, Royal Bears are taking their time, biding their time to kind of get to grips with what they want to do. Uh, going forward so again being put in a position where you are starting the side that you're attacking or defending from um in theory you should see a kind of mini game plan start to progress over time yeah so i i really just want to see how our agent picks come out and see what uh whether teams are going to be loading all in on the defensive or offensive side because that is also another thing obviously with compositions not changing at all for the map and we're us only playing one map what people go for is really gonna paint a story for these teams okay so we're seeing we are actually seeing a raise being brought to the table here by uh coventry i believe yes we do have Coventry starting off on the defense and hallway on the offense so uh, no surprise honestly to see uh some of the picks that we're seeing here on the commentary side getting set up for that two lane uh two site map rather uh and again there we see rd and top shagger both bringing the sage to the table so we are not quite getting people being experimental uh as experimental as they are at the pro level yet perhaps this will the things we said today will encourage the teams in future to maybe try a bit more uh I'm going to say versatility, that's completely the wrong word to use, but a bit more creativity with the lineups that they bring to the table, perhaps. Yeah, and we're seeing uh, a little bit of patience here. The ability is now starting to get popped one by one as the offense actually starts their, their move onto what looks like is going to be A site. See uh, the Sova Arrow goes. Nice the but now there's so much patience so far. I'm honestly surprised that nobody's really gone to make a move. Nobody wants to be the first pick of the night. You see a rotation coming around. They, this is the most patient I've seen uh, <laughs> a uni team in a long time. Yeah, we, as we say, we see a lot of these kind of smokes being used, a lot of this intel utility being used, but oh! Artist gets the first kill of the night, taking out his opposing uh, his opposing number. Top Shagger definitely uh, not looking like it right now. Artist picks up a second. The defense looking to hold strong with the spike carry getting dropped yet again. And Buster Grain looking to add another, but the third from Artist gonna pick up a flawless round there for the defense uh, statement from commentary. I mean, yeah, it's it's a. Uh... I will just like to quickly point out that having your uh, so your sage rather um, pick up a majority of the frags in that first round, it's almost like an angel of mercy, as I would call it. Uh, <laughs> again, curious to see how that was not so unpunished, considering the amount of intel utility that is being brought by Royal Holloway. Maybe that will take them aback slightly, and maybe they'll start readjusting things a little bit more now. Yeah, some would also say that the uh, the pistol round is sort of a crapshoot, so we might see maybe a little bit of changes once there. Uh, now, some equipment is there, but the first headshot is going to come from a pistol nonetheless. The defense drawing first blood. It looks like we've been getting a second here on the side of the rays as the wall comes up and they're going to be moving in. The aggression, you love to see it here from Coventry. Mambo absolutely popping off. It also looks like they're starting to now apply the pressure, even though they are the defense. It looks like they're the ones holding W and sort of applying that pressure onto the scared Royal Holloway. 
Yeah, Royal Holloway, despite the fact that they actually chose to, right to go attack, they are taking a very right passive here. attack. It's very slow, as we saw in the first round. They're not really pushing very quickly at the start of the round like you would normally expect on the smaller maps. Yeah, they're almost playing as if they picked defense because they are not they are not aggressing at all. Sure, you know, we were seeing some patience uh, in the first round, but they did get flawless. So you would have thought that maybe they would try and change up the way that they were going to approach the site. No, Keishin revealed their four top shagger. The only one left and he is going to get capped off. A second flawless coming out here for Coventry. And uh, you, you definitely uh, brought it up in the pre-match statistics that uh, Coventry have had to play harder opponents. And maybe this uh, difference in experience yeah. is showing between the two. <laughs> Definitely. I mean, if you're playing harder opponents and you're on two points and then it's someone's playing easier opponents and they're on the same amount of points as you, it doesn't really bode well for Royal Bears. As I say, though, I do love an underdog story, so I am hoping that they will start to kind of become a bit more confident with these pushes and really just burn and burn that utility. Yeah, I guess we can also maybe give them credit. The fact that Coventry are playing the defense, obviously. Well, it at the lower levels, defending these sites is a lot easier than aggressing onto them. So it might just be the Royal Holloway were just trying to get their attack ground done and sorted and they can rally in the second half. But uh, you at least want to be able to drop one person on uh, Coventry's side because double flawless is not what you want to see regardless. But again, why would you risk the hit to economy by just allowing yourself to take so many L's, you know? Oh! Speaking of taking L's, walking straight out of the smoke into the end of the gun barrel. This is uh, falling apart, but at the very least, they've got one kill on the side of Royal Holloway. Once again, Top Shagger left alone after the homies have gone home. They'll soon be joining them. The defenders picking up the third straight round. I can see chat. The, the bears, where are they at? <laughs> So they say, where are the bears? <laughs> where are the bears? You know, hibernation hasn't started yet. We're we're sitting in the peak of summer, but uh, the Royal Holloway bears definitely do not look like they are awake yet at all. No, and again, it's this tentativeness for them to actually push. I mean, they've got the brimstone, they've got the sova, they've got a cipher as well. That's so much like intel utility to be used. It's very confusing right now for me as to, you know, why they are not doing these aggressive pushes. If you have the ability to kind of turn around and be like, oh, he's here, he's there, blah, 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 blah. I don't know. Maybe give it a few rounds. Let the econ come up a bit, see what happens. Yeah, but if you're going to get the econ to come up, you probably want to put a couple of uh, <laughs> couple of digits in the K column. The location has been revealed for Taste the Void, and he's finally going to get dropped. Fable getting the wall bang headshot there. Putting his uh, team finally at a numbers advantage, but Reki is going to answer back with a wall bang. Oh. A little bit of extra interest on that one. So it looks like the defense have finally decided to hold Mouse one, and the bodies hit the floor instantly. Oh dear. Oh, Looks like a, a good start is gone. Yeah, I kind of feel slightly bad for uh, the Bears right now. Obviously, Econ kind of stuck around the two. two 900 mark at this point so quite frustrating for them probably uh because again the more rounds that they are going to give to coventry the more coventry is going to just start bringing these nasty and nastier guns for table getting more abilities stuff like that and slightly nervous for them right now yeah it doesn't it it doesn't seem very clear to me uh what their strategy is they're not uh they're not even necessarily getting outstratted right now. They're just getting outgunned. And I think I would like to see maybe just like something in terms of a rotation, maybe trying to poke one site and then actually see a rotation round because we're not seeing much of anything. It seems like they just sort of walk in, hold mouse one, get outgunned and GG go next. Yeah, and again, they've, I, in my opinion, maybe just stick to focusing your purchases around abilities more than anything at this point. We are you starting really to see have... that rotation, though. But again, like, so so late into the round. Yeah, a lot of this time is... has been burnt here. <laughs> I feel almost like there may be no 
pre-planned strategy. They may kind of just be, you know, okay, let's just be super, super focus our way of attacking on just flight. constantly. They're, they're rotating again. <laughs> and they're making use of the, the, the server fireball. Like through the smoke to try and get some info, but they haven't uh, held W in a long time, and the fin finally they're going to do so. And uh, Josh S is going to drop to the floor. So their presence has been uh, announced, and we've got less than 15 seconds here for them to get a spike plant. That's if they can even do it. Running through the just hail of bullets and ult coming out there from Mambo, picking up one. Uh, I would say too little, too late, but they. Didn't get anything done with that at all anyway. They were picking up one as the round ends, but... Food is, it kind of would like to point out as well that RD and uh, Mambo are obviously very, very good players. They seem to be getting a majority of these kills here. Yeah, you've got Mambo here with a nine. Oh, wait. Who actually with a six? I've been focusing way too much on RD, I think. <laughs> I think I've just been lured in with the Sage at this point. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's been pretty solid scores across the board from the defense. Very, very few uh, deaths on their side, Ricky, obviously, having not dropped at all, so playing on that original life. I, I, I would just like to see some speed. Like, even if you run in and get blitz once, I would like to at least see the this threat is, of speed. This is exactly what I mean about how they should be saving a lot of their economy for purchasing those abilities. You know, you've got two intel ops on the board and a brimstone. You can easily just run in, use a load of utility and kill everyone. But they're not punishing them enough, you know? Yeah, like we already seeing just that it seems they're getting outstrated constantly. They don't they don't understand how to play at the level that commentary is showing. Finally seeing Top Shagger pick up one before he's dropped. But uh there's still a little bit left to do. They have a three to two number advantage, never mind, make it even and the health bars are looking much more fulfilled on the side of the defense, but we finally got in our first spike plant of the night here for Royal Holloway. Now getting to set up and take the defense. That is a short-lived defense, as Rekio adds another set of uh, Ks to the column, and then easy to plant. Almost looking Halo for a second, seeing the uh, <laughs> the, the fuse and then stop the fuse. <laughs> Flashbacks to 2007. I don't know. Like you say, they at least uh, you know got the got the plant down. That's extra extra money on the board. Um, uh, and it, you know, oh my God. Look, at this, look, look at the credits right now that uh, Royal Hollow, not Royal Hollow, uh, Coventry have. They are, uh, they are definitely the rich I would be and very uh, the afraid. sneaky eat them. No more charges left. <laughs> yeah, these are the kind of moments where that goes there. I don't know. I'd really be think rethinking my strategy right now and trying to again work out a very like we say quick push a quick push would probably surprise them at this point actually if you've got you know the entire team to just go burn a load of utility and one bomb site nardi drops they were trying to push the issue but doesn't find the shots and is actually going to drop so finally a clean start for real holloway off of a slightly messy engage on the side of commentary will they be able to do anything with it or are they mentally boomed at this point i believe already? Believe in the bears, the hellfire is going to come down and Josh S is going to pick a second. <laughs> Location is revealed, but he's already gotten the job done. Three to five, still no damage at all on the side of Royal Holloway. So Taste the Void now going to have to aggress onto the site as the plant does come down. And Mambo picks up one. Un pretty much uncontested, no damage there at all. They didn't really see where he's coming from. They're being patient, but it does look like Royal Holloway. Your belief in them was uh, well placed. Let's and go. the attackers have finally picked up a round. We got one. I know it's a perfect example of exactly what I was saying about how they just need to approach the site and burn a load of utility, you know? Uh, I feel that they were definitely taken by surprise. Definitely getting those earlier picks onto uh, Reiko, for example, really, really benefited them then because, you know, having the better fraggers of the team die relatively early, well not early into the round but be some of the first to go when and then you're able to plant the spike 
Yeah, and the fact the that it was so clean good. as well. Yeah, the retake is very limited. I mean, Mambo, a very, very obviously brilliant player. Um, so only so much they could have done at that point. Yeah, but it does look like we've we back to our regularly scheduled passive offense. I don't know that maybe they've noticed that nobody is currently carrying the spike. So even if they do aggress onto a site, they uh they have forgotten their entry pass to a W. Right, and that's like we're finally <laughs> seeing the rotation back. Okay, yeah, we see uh I have the spike. sage going grabbing the spike. Maybe that was like a kind of you know, we'll we'll dip our toe in it almost. See if they can get some info, but yeah. uh, not a single shot fired from commentary. Actual no. good trigger discipline at a uni level. Who would have seen it? This is a much slower round. We're seeing a uh, taste of void. Kind of just uh, examine the sky. And now we're finally hearing Mouse One being held. It's in the flashbang round location has been revealed, though. The tracking dart. And I like that he's pushing up aggressively. He knows they have so many rounds ahead of them, as long as he can take out one before he drops. He believes that the rest of his team firmly able to uh, clutch out the rest of the round as the heal and the res are being popped here for Top Shagger. And how will the team get out of the situation? No kills picked up through the smoke, and now we're seeing an actual relatively quick rotation here. To the midpoint, and they're splitting off now, though, making sure they can get the sightline. They don't commit to something, but a lot of time was spent uh, trying to get that set up. So, once again, Royal Holloway uh, spending so much time setting up, they don't even get to enact their master plan. I mean, I would say maybe the passiveness, not passiveness per se, but maybe Coventry. You know, they're not really firing many shots in that last round to begin with was literally because they're like, oh, we kind of just had a round taken off us when we were doing so well. And that kind of makes me not salty, but sometimes people just want that really clear, flawless victory, don't they? Yeah. And I think they just wanted to tighten things up. But I mean, at the end of the day, they are, you know... They are the green team. They're, they're not the ones that have to go and force the issue. If Royal Holloway is going to take nearly an entire minute to even start their play, then that's an entire minute they don't actually have to do anything, and they're currently winning. Mm, it's again this very passive kind of, uh, let's grab a load of intel before we grab the spike, but realistically, even if you lose the round, you get that spike down and you can uh, get way more credits. Well, not way more, but... Yeah, there. at least get some form of impact. I think yeah, 300 um, credits you get. It seems like Fabled has uh, actually decided that maybe the hibernation in the middle of the summer is not the play, and Royal Holloway now actually starting. It's definitely too little too late, as we're going to be heading into the halftime real soon, uh, with a pretty hefty uh, deficit for them. But at the very least, we're seeing signs of life from the few bears that are currently left alive. Fable now with the AWP trying to set up. They do have the spike planted, and it's going to be interesting to see. They're trying to block off that sight line as Rekeo is going to just let that round disappear. Yeah, Rake is going to use this, I reckon, as a tactical timeout because realistically, you teleport through those things and they hear you. It's a 3v1 situation. This is the moment for Coventry to kind of sit down and be like, how are we letting them take these rounds off us? Yeah, it's almost definitely just a little bit of complacency and also some actual action on the side of Royal Holloway. Like, we haven't really seen anyone get anything done, but when we have been seeing these two rounds that have been taken, it has been on the back of Fable picking up an entry frag or two and uh, making sure that his team knows that they are supposed to be playing a tactical shooter, and that does involve shooting other people. <laughs> I mean, you know, again, looking at the lineups, though, they're not really taking any duelists. So I don't really think this is a team that like to be so aggressive. Again, you're on attack and you're not taking any duelists. That just feels very odd to me. At the same time, they're on attack and bringing loads of intel. They're just not using it and moving quickly with it. Speaking of intel, I can tell you that the information has been gathered that Mambo is no longer playing this round as the orb finds him directly in the body. 
But we just got to hope that the Bears were indeed hibernating for this first half. They're trying to just get the offense uh, out of the way and they're going to show up on the defense. Spable picks up another, not looking to be outdone. Smoke's coming down now from Blustery Grain. Sound like I heard a hellfire there, but the scoreboard not updating at all. So we're gonna assume it was a swing and a miss. The offense now looking like they're going. They they found the site that they figured out how to attack, and they're gonna keep going for it. This fable now sort of aggressing onto A. Even though the spike has been planted, you gotta wonder what commentary are doing here now. Really an odd series of events. Yeah, and again we kind of see this. Uh borderline confused passiveness now from the defenders yeah like currently they're moving like when you're doing your programming module and you're developing ai for the first time and you that sort of got so... the to do something they're kind of like <laughs> what the, the, that the spike is so over specific I I don't know. I've never I've never seen a team that was up seven two suddenly forget how the game works and just be peeking and poking over on something. But they've I given away they, a free round. They didn't. Yeah, they just gave them a free round. Which okay, fair enough. If they wanna, I w I don't know. I want to see the Bears punish them for that overconfidence now. Uh, play the game. Yeah, it's uh, it's so that was such a bizarre round. That was such a bizarre round. But you know, we're uh, we still got seven three. Even if we do have a couple of uh, scuffed uh, defenses, they've they've got enough of a cushion on them for now. But I would I would still like to see the aggression. Got the spike I mean, we did see a lot of utility being burned there by the rays. Um, again, just waiting for them to start making a, a fast approach, but they're just not. They are still holding back. But Reiko gonna win out over top shagger. Definitely not the top fragger right now. But Fable, whoever trying to put you know stake to that at least on uh, Royal Holloway's side. As he picks up another leading by example. Less than a minute left now on the clock. You see the abilities coming in. The information, they, they know roughly where he is. They haven't been able to do anything with it just yet. Ooh, nice trade there. And we're seeing trades left and right. But this is looking like, if I was to just base it off of the previous gunplay, it's going to work out in the side of the defense. But the spike is down. And now the defense is going to have to become the offense. And Bluster going to join his comrades in the grave. Just Reiko now having to lead by example as the last hope of the defense to maybe make sure that the bleeding uh, doesn't go for so long. Is able to pick up one, but isn't able to pick up the other. So once again, the attackers getting another round. This time they did have to play for it a little bit. And going into our last round without the swap. 7-4. Weird one. Yeah, very, uh, I don't know. I really do feel like if Coventry are almost like playing with the Royal Bears right now, you know, 7-4 up now, they're coming back by four rounds. You don't want to be messing around and letting them take these very, very easy wins from you. Yeah, and we don't, and like, sort of alluded to it before, this team is set up very information heavy. They are more suited to defense than offense. So mm. really you have to take the cushion in that you had uh, instead of letting this team go in with the momentum on what we would hope would be their strongest side. Hopefully at least the defense can uh, just stop the bleeding before we switch, uh, we switch um, over the rolls. Oof. Uh, Reiko using the alt to pick up one. But it does seem like uh, the rotation to B is going to be the play. They've got one uh, one uh, lurking over by A just to make sure there's no one on site. Reiko patiently waiting. He has been spotted. It doesn't seem like he cares. He's willing to take uh, the duel. Coventry have out-aimed them for the most part. Mambo unable to pick up one. 
of the uh, the ability you're going to be going through, just tossing that over the fence. This is the, an interesting thing, actually. So they pick the spike up, and instead of trying to go for those gunfights, I think they know that they may potentially get out guns. So they are going for that rotation, but Jump Coventry over. aren't really uh, expecting or predicting that. Yeah, we're seeing them once again with an advantage, and Joss S does seem to have very good sight line here, keeping things off. But Top Shagger getting picked off by Reiko again. Also making good use of the AWP, but now they do have to play a little bit more aggressively. Josh is able to pick up Mambo with a flick, and he picks up one more. He is making sure the team stays firmly on his back. But Reiko is going to put him to bed, and now they have to aggress onto the spike. There's no one left to stop them, so Coventry aren't going to be finishing five straight rounds uh, on an L, and they're going to finish uh, with a win. So twice the score of their opponents as we switch over to the half. If you where uh you know mama grace is back in there coaching royal holloway what do you want to, what would you be telling the team if you want to see them try and uh fix this score line punish them for underestimating you honestly like there are moments like the last round we just had there was a moment where okay you know you've played 12 this is a 12th round now uh and there was a moment where they were waiting for them to get the spike uh commentary were waiting for the spike to be picked up and then knowing like oh this team have been playing very passively and almost like borderline not scared but tentative to take those gunfights uh Never we're not going to predict that they're then going to completely go in the other direction to the a site do you know what i mean like it just yeah and i think uh the big brain play right now would be for uh ro the royal bears to actually completely punish them for that well now they are finally making use of uh, their agent strengths. And let's see if their uh, re resilience to not hit W will uh, pay out for them now that Coventry are the ones that are going to be deciding the tempo of the second half. Mambo uh, saying the tempo is going to be a little bit faster here on the pistol round, and they're going to be doing the same sort of uh, movement towards the other team. My eyes are down. Again, you've allowed them to take these attack rounds now. Where, oh, wait, I was going to say having the Brimstone, but Brimstone just immediately gets killed by Josh S here. Uh, all right, and we're seeing, uh, we're now actually seeing back and forth. So no Flawless coming out from the side, uh, from either side. Unlike the first person around us, Fable picks up another, taking down Artis with a headshot. But the spike is planted, so Holloway are now going to actually have to do something about this. We see Josh get picked off by his counterpart on the other side. Reiko picking up another. He is going to drop. And the defense have very, very little time to reach the spike. The flame wall goes down and is going to be down to the wire. That's whether the spike is going to detonate or be diffused, but it looks like Royal Holloway are going to make it out of the pistol round <laughs> with a very, very close W. That was very, very close. Too close for comfort, but, you know, maybe they will have better footing in the defense, as we say. Uh, again, if they start really bringing the thunder on this defense, it will be interesting to see how Coventry then try and adapt to it. Like, oh god, we shouldn't have given them those easy wins at times. Uh, can't remember which round it was, but there was a round where we saw them just not even try and go for the spike defuse. Yeah, I mean, if it comes down to that final map, they're definitely going to be kicking themselves <laughs> yeah, if they threw that game. come back to haunt you. Like, this is the thing. You don't want to... Uh, I don't know. don't want to be... I don't want to be rude and say it's, back. like, overconfidence or anything like that, but... Even, like, allowing your opponent to take a round easily off you, like, one round, it can make everything matter in the end, you know? Yeah. I mean, now the uh, money that was gained isn't going to be, you know, an issue as the economy was reset. But the defense, at the very least, getting to uh, get up a little bit of extra cash and Fable adding a second kill after uh, Asifa's opening one and Josh S adding himself to uh, that scoreboard as well. Bob Shagger actually able to pick up one there with the shotty. So this is looking like a very solid defense here for Royal Holloway. Will they be able to get away with the Flawless, or is Reiko going to... No, he's not going to have the game of his life, and it's going to be a Flawless here from Royal Holloway. They're punishing it, you know, Coach Grace. I love to see it, and again, I love, uh, you know, 
on defense, you want to be bringing those shotties. You really, really want to be bringing those shotties. And I, I just, I know, I love visually seeing shotgun kills as well. Like, I know that sounds really weird, but it's just so comedically funny to oh, me. This is a nice spot. Yeah, and just like, there's always tactical shooter, and then there's me crouched like, behind a smoke with a shotty. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, just like hiding in a box almost. Just like, here's a shotgun. It's like, I have tactically outplayed you. <laughs> positioning and raw mechanical but, skill. But no, you can, you know, you can do that on defense. You can anchor uh, with a shotty easily. And it's a, it's a viable strat. And I just love that the bears are, like, as we keep saying, they are punishing Coventry now for that initial confidence. Yeah, and you're seeing that they did prod the bear and, uh, all right, some crosshair placement may need to be reevaluated there from Joe just to get dropped by Reiko. And now the offense making use of their two-person advantage, pushing onto this B site and the spike has already been planted. So this should be a pretty easy hold. And Ace are actually still going to try and challenge rather than just uh, let them have the round. He's going to get dropped for it, but he's going to take one with him to the grave. And the Sage is staying very close. But you know, again, it's a thing I kind of appreciate. You saw the Sova then, you know, getting that intel and they really just want to go for it. And if that would have paid off, it would have been an amazing clutch for them. But Top, top Shag are only able to pick up one, so... Uh... I don't, I don't know if I agree with uh, him trying to challenge that and not just uh, backing off and letting the round save. But, uh, you I guess you, you do have those... to make plays. Yeah, you got to go for these plays. Like, it's, you know, I I feel like maybe that is uh, more of a kind of thing which the role bears want to do. They want to have these fun play styles on defense now that they've got through their kind of uh, tentative attack round. Maybe, maybe this is, is just a team that they just really love defending over attacking. Yeah, and I, I guess maybe they were just trying to get it out of the way, know what the score that they had to beat was uh, for their defense. They're going to have to out-defend the team that was pretty much skunking them at the beginning of uh, the match here. Obviously, it is best of one, so it's not like you can just get in a rut and decide that, you know, GG go next, we'll get them on our map pick. And that is a lovely angle. I'm just uh, inspecting mm -hmm. all the contents of the crates in the corridor. Ooh. Unfortunately for Top Shagger, he did have the angle, but isn't able to just uh, line up the head correctly. So the offense are actually going to make it through their unscathed, despite what should have been an easy double. Definitely going to be kicking himself here if it ends up working against them. And there it is. Unable to get anything done as the uh, red side of the kill feed lights up. But we're seeing some answer back kills here from Fabled and uh, Acifer. The spike is planted, so they do actually have to get some movement done soon. Commentary watching those angles, making sure that they don't join the comrades in the grave. Instead, adding a couple of compatriots for the defense. Napes are going to drop. So 10 to 6 here for Coventry. Whilst they are getting punished more often, they do have that cushy lead still, nonetheless. But again, these rounds are very, very, you know, they they won six rounds in a row. And then since round seven onwards, it's been very back and forth between these teams. Uh, yeah. Ideally, from the Royal Bears point of view, but again, it was they should have done a more aggressive attacking push to begin with. Uh, they didn't. Maybe they were just kind of putting their feelers out a little bit and getting to grips with like what kind of team Coventry are and what kind of things they're likely to do. And I don't know how analytical their IGL is going to be. Uh, but I can only assume that after you know round six, they were like, right, here, here's what we're going to do. We've we've sussed them out now. Yeah, I guess if if we've seen this play, if we would have seen this playstyle from them every single game they've played in their last four games, they are two and two. So maybe this maybe this is just you know fifty percent effective. Maybe this uh, non-existent attack phase and then strong defense uh, is how they beat fifty percent of teams. And maybe sometimes it doesn't work out, and they might actually want to learn to play attack. Definitely. I mean, it's like that beautiful placement of the spy cam last round. Uh, it's those kind of things that people tend to know after doing it over and over again so maybe they do just have better lineups and better strategies and better placement of utility and things like that 
on defense. Uh, maybe they need to scrim attack more, more starting on attack more. And finding yeah. little, again, little placements for things, ideal ways to, you know, loads of these maps you can kind of uh, look up a little bit and just yeet your ability and it will cut off like a big percentage of the map. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, no matter how much you know. <laughs> Oh, we're seeing the rocket fuse come out now. Mambo and Co. looking to start things off nice and fast, but instead it's actually going to be the offensive side getting dropped as Josh picks up three uncontested, finally going to join the people he's put in the grave. But he's given his team a very, very healthy advantage. So it looks like Buster Grain trying to trying to fight back, but instead he's going to get wall tapped by Acifer. And a pretty solid round there from Royal Holloway. They, they are showing that... The, the practice has been put in the defense, but sometimes you'd like to not put yourself seven seven rounds in the hole before you start actually adding adding numbers to your side of uh, the round column. I mean, yeah, definitely. But it's again, like I say, maybe they were just confident in their ability for defense that they allowed themselves that time on the first six rounds to kind of be like, you know, get our feelers out, see what they're doing, do a little bit of in-game analysis and just go for it, you know? Yeah, I guess. I will always be skeptical of it until it works. So they, they've got a little bit of a... you got to believe, still... Andrew. you got to believe. I, I do. They've just got to, they've got to show it to me because at the moment, they're still losing. As strong as their defense has been, they are still losing. It's not been a complete shout-out. Coventry have been able to pick up rounds uh, here and there. Hearing the shots go off, but no uh, names being added to the kill feed. As I say that, Josh S picks up one before being off by his counterpart, Taste the Void, also adding to the kill feed. And we're seeing the Storm Arrow come out, and it's hit one, but is he going to get the read on the direction? No. And it looks like now we're going to be seeing how Mambo or Joge goes around it, and the res coming up. I have, I have obviously not been paying too much attention to Ultimate Economy. Definitely something we've got to see at the end of this round, how the teams are looking in terms of resources. Just yeah, it's not happening. Alright, a Thrifty, that came out on the side of the offense. So, Coventry, once again, one of those rounds here or there getting picked up. And hopefully we'll see uh, on the scoreboard what people have in terms of resources. Yeah, so two ults online for the defense, only one the side of the offense they did have to spend a little bit to uh sort of make some of these rounds work so roller holloway still in a good place but they are trailing by four rounds but again it's this thing isn't a way you're kind of like defend a side of team i reckon they can pull it back we've been seeing this very big back and forth between rounds so you know they won the one before the last round that is true, and they have been markably more impressive, but it's only two rounds bit... left here for Coventry. Yeah, and I think, you know, when it gets to, like, this is, like, round 19 now, like, when it gets to this point, it's really down to stamina as well. Very, very true. And they've definitely not been uh, having to expend much physical stamina. Let's hope the mental stamina is there for Royal Holloway in these last couple of rounds. Make sure that they apply the pressure to Coventry University and make sure that they aren't thinking about that round that they threw and all the others that have been slowly creeping away from them as Royal Holloway tries to make... Oh! No! Switching to the knife, thinking the shot had already connected, but not confirming the dog tag was in the pocket. And now Coventry punishing this mistake. We talked about it from Holloway, but uh, that mistake has been punished to the maximum extent of the law. Only two remaining now on the side of Royal Holloway, who are going to have a mountain to climb, and it's just Acer for now. I'm against the world. I believe. Let's go. Well, there's two. Third of the round's going to pull out the recon bolt, try and get some information, but unfortunately not able to flick over before Mambo is able to seal out that attacking round and put Coventry University on their match point. And again, getting a 2k and then going to use ability is really not a bad idea. It's the perfect thing to do in that situation. Again, they only lost then down to reflexes, really. Yeah, um, and when it comes down to uh, swapping off of your kind of main <laughs> gun. Being stuck yeah. in a tiny little crate as well. <laughs> where, where people know where you are. Yeah, I think maybe if his team had maybe been able to thin the numbers a little bit, that hero play might have been a little bit more bountiful. For sure, for sure. But uh, I guess if you're going to be celebrating your kill before you've even confirmed it, 
Uh, you can sort of get what's coming to you as Mambo gets another bullet directly in the chest from across the map. Josh S making sure that what potentially could be the final round is at least going to start off on an exciting note. We see the rotation now coming out. A little, okay. well, I thought we were seeing it. It's a little bit slow Interesting now. Interesting to note that Josh, Josh S especially really has woken up on these defensive rounds. Yeah, I mean, his character is definitely defensively minded, but the mechanics are also very clearly there. We saw some uh, heads up plays from him earlier that helped uh, the de defense at least uh, put on a show, even if it wasn't putting uh, W's in the column. But they do have a uh, personnel lead, and obviously now this uh, passiveness is to their favor. This commentary and other ones that have to force the issue in order to get that final win. And Josh S able to pick up three. Actually picks up four before he drops the wall bang. He doesn't actually land uh, the shot on the person I was expecting him to, but it catches an unsuspecting uh, fourth kill. And it leaves enough for his team to be able to finish things off. So even though he does drop and he's going to have to rebuy the operator, you know, he's keeping the dreams alive. Again, we're seeing Rez relatively uh, available now. So... Be curious to see how this goes. Oh, we're looking at the score, but we have two alts online. Reiko coming up on his, though. So, depending on how this first engage goes, we may be seeing uh, a lot of cash being spent on the side of commentary to try and clutch out this round. And now we're going to really see whether it's going to be a patient, slow stranglehold here from Royal Holloway, or if they're going to just keep keep uh, going balls to the walls and just shut out Coventry as much as they can. I hate that phrase. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I couldn't, th couldn't think of a better one. That, uh, that little John song. The, <laughs> to the window to the wall. I, I definitely... Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of sweat that uh, is on the side of Royal Holloway, though. They've uh, dug themselves a very deep hole. And you can see it looks like they're trying to now get that uh, ult online. There's two members drop, one on each side. Never mind, they got two on the defense. Coventry looking to close things out here, but Reiko not able to get more done. Now, <laughs> the silence, honestly, is powerful. You can hear the spike ticking down, so the win condition is there for Coventry. If they can stall this out, and they'll be walking away with the W here today. The Sage has been located. She's sort of dancing in the smoke, but Fable is actually going to get dropped. So things are looking very dicey for Royal Holloway. They're going to need to move fast. The Storm Arrow coming out. But I... Okay, no, never mind. Joj is uh, there diffusing the spike. So once again, the, the dream stays alive. It did cost them a Sova Arrow at the end, even though Joj had uh, gotten... Uh, the kill before the first arrow had been shot. So unfortunate spend there for Royal Holloway. But in these sort of uh, late feast or famine situations, you, you, you can expect a couple of misplays. Yeah. Pepe hands. <laughs> no, I think I think this is a, actually proving to be quite an entertaining match. We're seeing both teams really waking up, using all of their utility. Um, and again, that percent, the win percentage for the teams, it's gone from 100% uh, for Coventry down to 66-ish percent. I'll say, well, 66.67, but if I'm too specific, I just sound like a robot. <laughs> and, you know, that percentage is dropping more and more as time goes on. These games are going to be incredibly, incredibly close, I think. Yeah, there's only three rounds in between, but I believe... Yeah, I mean, they're going to have to try and make sure there's less uh, rounds in between them because they cannot be training them back out. They're back still against the wall, even though they are being escorted closer and closer to that finish line. But despite all those shots coming in and uh, the ult being spent there from Mambo, we haven't seen any bodies hit the floor, but the spike did get planted for free. So even though we haven't seen much movement before Joj and the defense pick up a couple back to back, we do need to see... Holloway move in to get the defense, and as long as they don't rush this and Mambo isn't able to clutch it out, they should be able to bring this to a 12-10 scoreline. As you can see, he's able to pick up none. Acifer putting him in the ground. 
your dream is still alive, Grace. It is. It is. <laughs> you know, you've got little cubs. So they, they, they could be. They could be bringing this to overtime. Just gotta iron out every mistake possible, oh, this is and a, you this, can tell. This is a hundred percent what I mean. Like this is a cracker of a game. As I say, the win percentage has gone from a hundred percent, and it's just dropped and dropped and dropped for Royal Coventry, S especially like since that switch over. Which is again, it's it's super interesting to see the fact that uh, Royal Bears were not punished for essentially giving them six free rounds at the start. I really do think Coventry are going to be kicking themselves for giving the, the free rounds earlier to the Bears. Uh, incredible scenes, Andrew. Yeah, right, and but one of, the th one of the things that we've actually got to keep in mind is Coventry have three alts now. They're actually coming up on a fourth very soon. So even if they give this round away, either intentionally or just as a result of getting outplayed, there's a lot of cash that can... Uh, be dropped a huge a huge set of uh jemmies are in the baggie right now <laughs> and if they like choose that. to go on a spending spree coventry could quite easily close this out with very little gunplay artists and reiko exactly moving as a pretty much a suicide squad picking up one we're trying to see the wall bank come through here and eventually is going to pick up the second they are moving in with purpose we might not even need to see the cash getting spent but josh s saying maybe you should consider not window shopping in my territory right now. I believe Josh. He's going to have to put the team on his back. He's done it multiple times before. But to what effect? We see one there. And I love him checking the camera just to see if there's any information he can get whilst he's not scoped down. And the Phoenix are being popped. His placements of these spy camps are perfect. And he picks up another but. We do need his partner to pick up the thing, but Phoenix, obviously, when he does have uh, that ult down, he is able to come back and run it back. So it's going to be forced there, and the team is eliminated. There was pretty much, pretty much outstrated there at the end. There was a humongous effort from the Royal Holloway crew, but unfortunately, just a little bit too little too late, and the Cubs are going to be returning to hibernation with a loss added to their economy. But a, a cracker, as you've said, nonetheless. Yeah. Really no, turning like, it up at the end. This is what I mean. Like, 13-10 is not a bad score at all. And even if I was the, you know, Royal Holloway right now, uh, Royal Bears, I, I would not be disappointed in that at all. They have just shown that on defense, they are a very, very strong team. Josh S with those Cypher plays. Like, that is exactly uh, how Cypher should be played. Like, anything in any game which it re revolves around intel like that. So, for example, like, if people are watching and they play Siege, there's operators like uh, Valkyrie and Mozzie where you just have these camps that you can find people and immediately you come off and you shoot them. And that is what Josh S was doing. And that is exactly how Cypher should be played. Yes, they lost, but they're winners in my heart, Andrew. Yeah, honestly, just seeing, seeing Josh turn it up, for that second half really like definitely my favorite player to watch mm. uh throughout the entirety of the game obviously um coventry put on put on a solid show mambo was very entertaining to watch and artist also uh putting in solid work for the first half of the game but it's just something so entertaining about seeing a cypher just put the entire you know get the strap on the harness just be like <laughs> all right everyone hop on I'm going to carry the team as far as I can go. Stumbling a little bit just short of the finish line, unfortunately, for Royal Holloway. But at the very least, what was shaping up to maybe uh, maybe be a quick one, uh, nearly hit overtime. So, and again, you know, good stuff for the boys. Again, just to point out, you know, Fabled finishing on 26 kills as well. Reiko finishing on 24. Like, these are good teams, you know? Uh, and yeah, maybe the OMWP was a bit, like, heavily weighted towards Coventry, but that was incredible, honestly. Yeah, I, I had a blast watching uh, watching that. So hopefully we'll be uh, getting a second match that's equally as good. You know, there's a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit of hype to uh, try and match for uh, the second game coming up. But once we know what that is, I cannot wait to see what they bring to the table. Hopefully we'll be uh, maybe seeing these teams in future parts of Top Cut, obviously. 
Uh, we are in the Swiss stage still, so it's still all to play for to qualify for that top cut. And uh, maybe, maybe we're seeing Roller Holloway or Coventry in the future. Get to see the Bear Cubs, see how they've grown since we've seen them this week. Oh, I'd absolutely love that. <laughs> But hopefully they can at least also look back at the VODs and sort of iron out some of the mistakes that we were seeing early on. Mistakes, especially in the one where they didn't have the W key installed. I think that, I would love to see that get patched uh, in their game plan. But uh, until then, until then, we'll be going to a quick break whilst we get everything else sorted out. I have been Elixir and been joined by the lovely Grace. This has been UK Uni Valorant and we'll be back real soon. Don't go anywhere. Je suis froid de peu